Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme to News 10 at 10 where you get more news in less time. Let's get started. Well, we kick things off tonight with weather because it has been a windy night across the area with some tree damages as well. A wind advisory just expired at the top of the hour tonight. Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo joining us from the Outdoor Weather Center. And Jeremy, it already looks calmer than it did earlier this evening out there for you. Markedly, it is much calmer outside and that's a bit of good news. But keep in mind, we're going to hang on to the breezy conditions straight through the day on Thursday. Right now, not sitting too bad, 48 degrees, and I'm here to attest that winds out of the west southwest at 22 miles per hour definitely have it feeling like 41 if you find yourself in one of those wind gusts. Similar story across much of the region, 48 in Coeur d'Alene, 52 in Sandpoint, and near 50 out in central Washington. When it comes to what we are seeing across the region, well, it's wind dying down, but notice we hang on to those gusts up near 20 miles per hour even as we get into the day tomorrow. A bit of a shift in that wind direction as well. But as you heard from Mark, we did have some down tree limbs. We've now expired the wind advisories and some of those blowing dust advisories as well. So things are starting to shape up to be a bit better. But as wind calms down a bit and we get that cooler air mass in place, we're talking a chilly Thursday ahead. That comes with some mountain snow across both the northern Rockies and the Cascades, so be ready for it if you're doing any mountain travel. As that moves out, clouds kind of stick around throughout the day, so we're talking mostly cloudy skies for tomorrow and temperatures going from the 30s, well, near 30, all the way up into the mid-50s tomorrow afternoon. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. New at 10 tonight, a North Idaho school district has some difficult decisions to make. Voters last night rejected a levy needed to continue basic educational programs for students in the Plummer Worley School District. Grab News Kyle Simchuk traveled out there today to find out how the district plans to move forward. Kyle? Well, the superintendent says this is not only going to affect students, but also teachers. He says some of them are already looking at job opportunities elsewhere, and the district may not be able to replace all of them. Russ Mitchell paid close attention to election results during Tuesday's primary. He's not running for office, but he is running the Plummer Worley School District as superintendent. Uh, last night it was, it was pretty disappointing, but uh, we got up this morning and you know you go back to teaching and you do the things you can do. The district put a supplemental levy on the ballot. A person living in a $300,000 home would have paid an extra $142 in property taxes, slightly less than the levy that was passed in 2019. This year's levy was struck down, only 46% of voters in favor of it. I get a little defensive when it's about kids and it's, um, this, this isn't about salaries. This isn't about uh, we're building some, some grandiose building. It isn't about, this is about kids learning to read, learning to write, and then those things that, that matter to them like athletics. Some sports we may just not be able to have. Mitchell expects the district won't have enough money to hire the same number of teachers once current staff retire. We just won't replace those positions and then we'll shift people around. Some people are not going to be in their area of expertise. That's that's for certain. We have some uh, teachers that have actually come to me and, and said, uh, you know, I, I think I need to be looking for a job because I'm, I'm not sure how, how this is going to land. So and there's lots of districts looking to hire. So we've, we've already lost uh, some to that. Voters approved four separate levies between 2013 and 2019. The district didn't ask for one in 2021 because federal COVID dollars filled in a lot of gaps and a lot of people were out of work. They elected not to. They're very sensitive to raising taxes. But now those federal dollars are running thin. That's why the district asked for a new levy this year. It's why Mitchell is concerned about what's next. He wants the school board to ask the community once again to pass the levy this August. And make sure that we don't adversely affect the students as much as possible. And we asked Mitchell why he thought this levy didn't pass. He says one thing they have to consider is there's a lot of people moving into the outskirts of town that don't have school kids and really have no connection with the district. In the newsroom, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. And new tonight, the city of Spokane says work on the Hatch Road Bridge is going smoothly and crews are on schedule. The bridge was shut down this March in order to replace the bridge deck. Heavy vehicles had reportedly been causing it to shift. The bridge connects Highway 195 to Spokane South Hill. Drivers are having to use I-90 as a detour instead. The bridge is expected to reopen July 31st. Now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. A warning for Stevens County residents. It could take longer to respond to your calls for help. This comes after one of the Stevens County fire trucks was stolen and another was damaged. It was like, oh, this can't be happening. Uh, 
you know, we're just a little volunteer fire department. Uh, and this is kind of a big issue. The fire chief for District 2 not only noticed one of their trucks was severely damaged, but someone also stole their wildland fire truck as well. This one pictured here. Chief Rick Anderson says this means his station is out of service for the, quote, foreseeable future. And more recently, an impaired driver rammed into a Stevens County ambulance. If you have any information about this stolen truck, they would certainly love to hear from you. Tonight, Colville Tribal Police searching for this man, an escaped inmate. Take a look at your screen right now. Amos Steggs is his name. He is 27 years old with black hair and brown eyes. He's described as being 5 feet 7 inches tall and weighing about 150 pounds. Authorities say he has a history of violence and is charged with battery, strangulation, and reckless endangerment. Police aid Staggs escaped from the Colville Indian Agency Corrections Facility back on May 8th. He climbed the fence of the outside recreation area to the top of the roof. He then jumped off the roof and ran away, according to authorities. He is from the Nespelum area and was last seen in Yakima. Anyone with any information is urged to call the Colville Tribal Police Department or your local law enforcement. What's at stake here is does the government have the power to restrict private conversations between a counselor and his or her client? What's at stake is whether or not uh, basically quack medicine can be used to treat individuals who are gay and try and convert them and become a heterosexual. In Washington, a state law banning conversion therapy for minors is being challenged again. The law prohibits licensed healthcare professionals from trying to change a minor's sexual orientation or gender identity. A family therapist from Western Washington argues the ban criminalizes certain speech and infringes on he and his client's religious faith. Last year, a judge dismissed an appeal ruling the law does not infringe on licensed health professionals' First Amendment rights. It could take weeks or months before there is a decision, rather, from the court in this latest challenge. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000, and we'll send them right to your phone. As the national baby formula shortage worsens, President Joe Biden is invoking the Defense Production Act. The act prioritizes key ingredients for formula production and compels suppliers to provide the needed resources to manufacturers. And now lawmakers are calling for an investigation into the Abbott formula factory that's at the center of the shortage. Recalls happen, but this company has lied, it's cut corners, it falsified records to cover up misdoings at the sake of infant health. The nationwide baby formula shortage has led to at least two children in Memphis needing to be hospitalized. Meanwhile, tonight, the House passed the Infant Formula Supplemental Appropriations Act. The act would give the FDA $28 million to add additional resources to prevent a future formula shortage. In Northwest News, the city of Edmonds near Seattle has passed a city ordinance banning overnight camping. That ban targets people who are homeless. The city council there making it clear they are not welcome on public property overnight. In the new ban on public camping, if someone violates this ordinance, they could face a $1,000 fine or up to 90 days in jail. In some cases, if someone can't pay a fine, they may be ordered to do community service instead. In the meantime, we want to let you know about a story that we're working on for you for tomorrow for Creme 2 News. Homelessness is a growing problem in Spokane, but it's been a challenge in Seattle for years. So we traveled across the state to talk solutions. Where would you have been if you didn't have this as an option? In the tent outside. Would you really? Yeah. Where would you have gone? Uh, probably under a bridge. Uh you know, an abandoned house, a porch. And that is increasingly becoming a problem in places like Spokane and other desirable communities um, throughout the state. What do you think a city like Spokane can learn from Seattle's experience so far? Our Whitney Ward toured a tiny home village that is having great success getting people off the streets and out of shelters. And she also talked with those who have seen firsthand what is working and what is not working. So make sure to join us for our two-piece in-depth report. We'll also hear from Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward about her plans for a new homeless shelter and whether City Council is on board. That's coming up tomorrow night right here on Creme 2 News at 6. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10 where you get more news in less time. We'll be back in just 90 seconds.